Hello, Brian McCarthy here from Bold and Break. Things are about to get fresh around here. Just like my haircut. Cool, so let's get started. Um, this is a Redshift and Cinema 4D tutorial. This tutorial came off the back of a friend sending me his scene and asking me to take a look at it. Um, the reason being is because they're learning Redshift. So we're just kind of like looking over the basics of Redshift and what matters. It's a very different render engine. It acts very differently to Octane and Arnold. Let's have a quick look at the scene. And the first thing I noticed is they are using a subdivision surface modifier. When you're using Redshift, this is not something you want to be using. You want to be using the Redshift tag uh, to subdivide your geometry. This allows Redshift to kind of put the subdivision within its render, render engine then, rather than pulling that information from Cinema 4D. The next thing we want to look at is the render settings. Now, the reason Redshift is so powerful and it's become uh, quite popular is because of this sampling overrides menu. This basically tells Redshift where you want where you want its processing power to be. What I mean by that is in Octane you have a unified sampling approach and a lot of render engines will just throw kind of samples on what it thinks is um, the most taxing areas of the scene. What Redshift does is it gives you control to tell Redshift what the taxing, what the most taxing uh, areas of the scene are. This can be great and this can be terrible because if you don't understand how to manage it, it can be difficult. It also makes every bit of every kind of scene very contextual. What I mean by that is every scene is individual. There's no one size fits all. So you've got to kind of know how it works. And I'm still learning Redshift myself. There are things where I'm like, why isn't it working this way? This is strange. And we're probably going to come across that in this video. Because um, this video is coming up on the web. So let's have a look at the scene. The other thing we want to look at is the unified samplings. This is important to manage. And 16 to 256, that's quite a wide gap. And that confuses Redshift a little bit. Um, it kind of, if you're going to use the sampling overrides menu, which we're not here, so kind of this is the worst. Um, you want to kind of keep this as tight as possible because that means that the range in which um, Redshift is throwing samples elsewhere is quite small, and then you can tell it to focus here. Now let's look into our scene further. Now there are f there are a lot of lights in the scene. Um, and that's going to also uh, kind of add a lot of time to your render and possibly a lot more noise. The reason being is there's a lot more light bounce to calculate. And this again can, can throw a kind of spanner in the works in terms of kind of more grain. Let's uh, do a bucket render here. And take a snapshot. And then let's delete these lights in our scene. And take another snapshot. So we have halved our render time there. Um, yes, it's very dark. Okay, let's quickly fix that. Let's, uh, let's do minus 40. And bring our exposure up to 1.5. Okay, now. Um, we're also getting our shadow back because there were so many lights uh, it was kind of um, blowing out our shadow and we're getting no shadows okay this isn't perfect but we're gonna see a difference in render time already uh, let's again take a snapshot of that and we're five seconds compared to our eight that was there which you know that's quite a uh, reduction um, and are we getting a lot of noise yeah we're getting a bit um, I'm going to kind of play with this a little bit more. It's a bit better. Again, this dome light isn't perfect, but it will we can we can work with it. It's a bit overexposed there now. 
Okay, now that we've had a play around with our dome light and we've taken away those lights, we've kind of given ourselves more of a chance to really speed up this render and show the power of Redshift. So let's bring down our sample max to 32. And that will definitely take down our render time. Uh, let's take a screenshot of that, or snapshot, sorry. And that is down to 1.5 seconds. Let's take reflections and bring this up to 512. And make sure you don't have your snapshot selected. That's not doing much, but we can take lights and bring that up to 512 as well. And we've already gotten rid of a load of grain and noise. And that render time is super fast. That's at 1.66 seconds. Let's even push it further. 1024 on the reflection and 1024 on the light. 2.4 seconds and that's quite an increase um, in quality. So we can see here, so we can see here this, this kind of this, we're still getting grain in these parts. Okay, we're pretty fast and we've override our light sample at 1024 and we've override our reflection sample at 1024. And we've got our threshold, you know, quite close together, which is nice, but we're still getting this grain on the kind of bottom layer here. And my guess is it's the GI. Uh, I'm not gonna go into GI, but what we can do is we can up the number of rays um, in the brute force GI. Let's up this to about 64 and see what we're getting here. Yeah, we've got rid of a little bit of grain. And um, to show you what I am talking about, let's, yeah. Let's um, go down to Unified Sampling and tick Show Samples. And this will show your samples in your scene. And we're getting a few here, we're getting a few here. The reason these aren't coming up is because they're quite blown out, which is fine. That works for our, the way our camera's set up. And if we put this up to 128, We, we get rid of these um, this bit of grain here at the end. And we're only at three seconds. So Redshift is super fast with um, GI. And this is where it, it was so complicated to kind of figure out these things. Um, we needed to make sure our unified sampling was right. We needed to make sure that we were throwing samples at the right um, kind of information in the Redshift engine. We need to set up our scene correctly and we need to be using the redshift tags. These are all kind of small intricacies that lead you to a, a clean, fast render. Um, and, and that's why people use redshift is because of the amount of control, not because it makes it look more real or because it makes you kind of makes your work better. It's because of the amount of control. If you're doing product visualization, it's brilliant. You know, you, you've got you've got total control over it. It's, Kind of a peculiar product if you're doing animation again brilliant because you can focus on the things that are important um you know um so kind of bear that in mind when you're, you're looking at different render engines uh, especially with redshift it's very particular about um how you use it um that's not to say it's better at all it's it's just another it's just another tool octane's great i use it myself i've used it in the past um, you know, I love Arnold. It's just too slow for me personally. Um, it, you know, the, the realism of Arnold is incredible, but it's also important to realize you need to be very fast as a designer. And um, thanks for watching. Do let me know if there's anything that was confusing about this. It can be quite tricky to kind of like convey uh, how these things work. Uh, this is quite technical. I'll be going back to more kind of uh, design led tutorials um, sooner and we'll be definitely getting more 3D stuff in. Um, please remember to subscribe. Um, we did hit 100 recently. Uh, appreciate the support and the comments um, and just, you know, getting involved. If you want to send any of your scenes, let me know. Um, thank you for watching and goodbye.